I'm Richard Cartwright and today we're going to be talking to you about custom fitting. We're going to be busting some myths. We're going to be telling you the truth about custom fitting. You know, gold clubs aren't cheap. £500, £600, £700, £2,000, £3,000 for a set of irons. So they're not cheap. But you've got to make sure they are right for you. Now, I'm going to be busting some myths for you today because there's plenty of myths like the golf swing. There is plenty of myths out there in regards to custom fitting. Let's get stuck in. This is one, this is a question I hear so much. Am I a beginner? Am I going to need custom fitting? A lot of people don't feel they need custom fitting if they're a beginner. They don't, their swing's inconsistent. Beginners absolutely need custom fitting. No two ways about it. Why is that? Because they need the right length of shaft. They need the right weight of shaft. They need the right head for them. The problem is if you haven't quite got the right clubs for you, let's say for example, if you're a lady golfer, tends to be you need a, a, a lot lighter shaft. If you've been using your husband's uh, big, big heavy chunky steel shafts, you are going to get no energy in that golf ball, you're going to get no energy in the swing. You need lighter shafts. So custom fitting and the right, seeing the right person to help you with that is going to be crucial. Also, again, you need the right heads. You need the right heads to ensure. So again, you might find an old set when you're just starting. Your, your granddad might have given you his old set of blades, for example, which are really going to be, going to be almost impossible to hit and impossible to use. They're not going to give you the best start in your golfing career. It is really, really important to get custom fitted. You don't need to go and spend, don't, don't panic, you're not going to spend sort of eight, nine hundred pound, a thousand pound. You can if you want, but there's really no need to. There's some good, good solid sets out there for four or five hundred odd pounds. Yeah, it's still a lot of money. It's something you want to do going forward for the next few years of your life, it's worth investing. Again, another thing I hear quite a lot of, is it going to benefit better players more? Yes, I guess it does. Um, but they need a little bit more specific. Really need to look at a little bit more loft, so many shafts out there to choose from, what shaft would tend to spin the ball less, what tends to shaft has a high kick point, low kick point, etc. So they need to go into a little bit more detail. So I get, yeah, I guess yes, better players need custom fitting more, but it still doesn't detract from the fact that if you're a beginner golfer, you still need to have a set that's right for you. I just want to give you a few little tidbits as to what it entails. So if you come for a custom fit in with me, for example, I'm going to show you what we go through. So again, first and foremost, we test what your clubs you've got at the moment. Okay, because if there's no technology out there that's better than your clubs, there's no point in spending that extra money on getting something that's just the same, if not worse, maybe than what you've already got at the moment. So we test what golf clubs you've got at the moment and then compare with the new Callaway technology in our case to help you hit the ball. Better distance, better dispersion pattern. To do that, we look at a couple of things. First, we test what shaft you'll need, whether it's steel, graphite, regular, stiff. We'll use the Trapman to test what your swing speed is and see what your ball flight's like and your spin rates. And then from there, we'll make the best judgment call to see what shaft is right for you as per the spin rate, as per the quality of the contact. And the shaft length is hugely determining what quality of contact you've got. So as a general rule of thumb, the longer the shaft, the more heel hits. The shorter the shaft, the more toe hits. So it doesn't just necessarily matter about how tall you are. Okay, I had a guy in the other day who was six foot 10. You know what, he fitted into standard length golf clubs. There was two reasons why he did that. One, because he was already hitting out the middle of the golf club with the standard length clubs. And two, what we call his wrist to floor measurement was pretty much the same as mine. Okay, he was very much, he had quite long arms for a tall guy, so his wrist to floor measurement was pretty much the same. So, so incidentally, he was pretty much set up similar, to length away from the ground as I was. I'm only five foot eight, five foot nine. So hit it into pretty much standard length golf clubs and he was hitting it beautifully, pretty much out the center, 
every single time. We check what the lie angle is on the golf club. Now the lie angle is how the club sits to the ground. It's how the club sits to the ground. What we want to see is the middle of the sole of the golf club meeting the ground first. Okay? Some golfers tend to have the toe down first, shaft a little bit more upright. Some golfers tend to have the heel down first or come into contact with the heel of the sole first. What that does is add extra dispersion patterns to the golf, the golf ball. Why? Because there's a little bit more deviation in the face angle when it hits the ground. Okay, so the ball can go left or right. So our job is to make sure we either make it flatter or more upright to make sure that middle of the sole meets the ground first. How do we do that? We put a sticker on, on the golf club. You'll notice the sticker has seven lines on it with a few degrees on it. Now again, when we put that sticker on, we'll put a black marker on the golf ball. And what we'll do, we'll line up the black marker to the golf club, we'll strike a shot, and then when we see, see on the sticker itself, we'll see a black mark that's either at a slight angle or it goes straight up and down. And that determines exactly where the sole of the club is meeting the ground. And then we decide whether they're a bit up, whether you need more upright, more flat, I'm sure it's the right lie angle for you. We also talk about the heads as well, especially these Mavericks, there's three different heads. There's a Maverick, Standard Maverick Pro, Maverick Max. So again, we determine, we fit a few shafts, fit a few shafts into the heads, and we determine what goes for you, what's best for you. Whether it's slightly lower loft, a little bit more higher loft, whether the, the head's the right size, whether you look down and feel comfortable. Comfort is a big thing about custom fitting. If you look down on a golf club, even if it's the right one for you, and you look down on a golf club and you don't feel comfortable, chances are you're not gonna hit that very well. So we've gotta take that into account. So test grip, now that's a bit more personal preference rather than anything. And again, what type of grip is very much personal preference. And now, whatever thickness of grip you want is again, personal preference. There used to be a lot of stuff written about how uh, if, if you've got too thick a grip, it leads to some blocks, some open faces, because we're not able to release our hands. Thinner grips do the opposite. They tended to think a few years back, tend to rotate the face a little bit more. That is not true. That is absolutely not true. No matter how, if this grip was, as thick as my, as thick as this room, I'd still be able to rotate that club face over. So it's not strictly true. It's very much, again, personal preference. So it tends to be, again, general rule of thumb if you're a large hand or a jumbo grip. If you're a small hand, we tend to be a standard grip. Ask as many questions to the fitter as you want. Ask as many questions. You're spending a lot of money on these golf clubs. So you need to make sure they're the right ones for you and you understand why the fitter has, has chosen that club for you. Take your clubs to the, to the fitting. I've had a few people turn up without their own golf clubs. And it's crucial that you actually do bring your golf clubs so we can test your old golf club to see how they perform because they might be the ones for you still. I'm also gonna go out on a limb here and say not to visit an American golf. Okay, so I would much rather you go to an on-course pro shop a fitting specialist um, down at Titus HQ, Callaway HQ, wherever it might be. Okay, why do I say that? I've heard a few people talk about American golf now, but the expertise you get at that store, again, with the greatest of respect, is not the best. They're not necessarily trained fitters. They're not necessarily trained to be able to fit golf clubs. In regards to the fact they offer a large range, even have a recommendation to go to. If you're spending, a, again, a lot of money, you need to make sure they're the right ones for you. Would you go to a tailor's and have a suit fitted by one who doesn't really know exactly what measurements you need? Make sure you also go somewhere with a good launch monitor. Foresight Sports, Trapman, anything like that is, again, really, really important. They will give you the numbers that you need, the accurate numbers that you need. Hope this helps anyone going to get custom fitted um, in the next few weeks or so. Please comment, agree, disagree with what I'm saying. Please also subscribe, hit that like button, and also hit that bell to get more updates on the videos that I'm about to send as well.